are you not having regular conversations with the Prime Minister, particularly in advance of his message to the whole of the United Kingdom? Well, I had a conversation with the Prime Minister last week, made very clear to him my view that we should stick with the stay-at-home message. Um, the Prime Minister is entitled to decide what message is appropriate for England. I, I'm not here to criticise Boris Johnson. We've all got difficult decisions to make. We're all trying to make them to the best of our ability. I think it's an important point to stress. It's not a political point. It's actually a point of law that the lockdown restrictions are in place separately in all four of the UK nations. So the Prime Minister in England, myself in Scotland, the First Ministers of Wales and Northern Ireland all have to look at the data in our own countries and come to decisions. We're trying what to... Coordinate. And what is the difference in the data in Scotland? Do you... Because we've been told that um, the average... R rate, which is the transmission rate, is under one person, 0.5 to 0.9. But is it higher in Scotland, which is why you've stuck with the stay at home message? That's a, a good and important question. So let me preface my answer by saying there's a degree of uncertainty in all of these estimates, but the current estimate of the R number in Scotland is that it is between 0.7 and 1, but we can't be sure that it's not closer to 1 than 0.7. There is also uh, an indication that it could be, but again, there's uncertainty slightly higher in Scotland than in other parts of the UK, which would make some sense. Our first cases were later, so we may be at a slightly earlier stage of the infection curve. So all of that says to me that at this stage, we must err on the side of caution. We need to push the infection rate as low as possible before we start to ease restrictions. Otherwise, we risk a resurgence of the virus that will quickly run out. Well, I, see, I, I totally agree with that. And I think you've been very consistent and clear in your messaging. By You, know, you may not want to uh, criticise Boris Johnson, but you yourself said you don't understand what this stay alert new message is. But what is clear from this new message is he's abandoned stay at home. And most people this morning, from what we're picking up, are now taking that as a sign that actually we don't have to stay at home anymore, which seems to me, given the state of this battle with this virus, unbelievably reckless. Look, he's taking decisions that he thinks are right for England. He's the Prime Minister of the UK, so when he talks about things like border control, he's talking for the UK. But in terms of easing the lockdown restrictions or changing the message, it, that is for England, and I have a, a responsibility to judge you things. You said you don't understand it. I mean, and if you, you, First Minister of Scotland, doesn't understand the new slogan of yeah. the UK government, that's pretty serious, isn't it? But that, that's why I'm sticking for now with stay at home. My message in Scotland, and my duty is to explain to people in Scotland what I'm asking them to do and why. So except for essential purposes, which is essential work or shopping for food and medicine or exercising, and now we're saying you can exercise as many times a day as you like as long as you stay away from other people when you're out. Apart from these reasons, my message is stay at home because we are in a situation right now where we are making progress against this virus, but that progress is fragile. And I don't want people looking at me a few weeks from now and saying, why on earth did you start to ease these Restrictions. Can you explain, um, First Minister, why only now is the UK government talking about quarantining people when they land in this country from many countries that have appalling uh, breakouts of coronavirus, New York uh, being one place, uh, Italy and others? Can you understand why we've not been doing this to, to date? Well, there have been reasons given for that. It is one of the issues where I have increasingly thought that that had to change, and I'm glad now that the UK government is changing its position. I think that change should be introduced as quickly as possible because what is crucial, as we suppress the virus here and move to a situation where we're using tactics like test, trace and isolate to keep it suppressed along with continued social distancing, it makes no sense to uh, allow the potential for people to bring the virus into well, the why country. Why would that have not made sense? I mean, who, who is responsible, for example, in Scotland? Your airports are still open for business, are they, all of them? Uh, sure, although there's not very much traffic coming through our airports right now. Border control is a reserve matter for the UK government. But they're still open at the moment. People can fly into Scotland. Uh, people can fly in, but in practice there are not many people doing that. Um, but border control is not something I uh, can decide on. That is a, a matter for the UK Rob, government. That's, that's I... the point I was going to make. So that decision is not yours. What I can't understand is why we would suddenly think now that this is a problem of people... 18 million have come in since the World Health Organisation 
describe this as a global health emergency. We've allowed 18 million people to come in, of whom we've only quarantined, as far as I'm aware, under 300. And even so, the quarantine yeah. measures now, we're not even sure how that gets enforced. I mean, how do you enforce quarantine for 15,000 people a day? Sure, there has been community transmission, of course, in the UK for some time, and the, the rules on lockdown, social distancing, would apply to anybody coming into the UK. You know, I, we, we can, of course, all of us, and in due course, we will have to look critically and closely at the decisions that have been taken by all of us, uh, what we got right, what we got wrong. All of us will have made mistakes along the way here. I think what's really important now, though, is that we continue to focus on the steps ahead, giving people the clearest possible advice and, and the greatest clarity of message and taking very cautious and careful decisions. Of course, we want to get back to as much normality as possible, as quickly as possible. OK, Nobody Dominic Raab, Dominic Raab, apparently, he won't come on the programme, but he's just told BBC Radio 4 that you can meet both your parents if you maintain social distancing and it's outside. I mean, this is a staggering new uh, announcement by the government, which Boris Johnson did not say last night, but Dominic Raab apparently has just said something quite seismic. This will mean all... I haven't seen my parents in 13 weeks or so, whatever it is. Has he put uh, an age limit on it? I, I mean, these people, we're told that the most vulnerable people are the over 70s. Both my parents are over 70. But now Dominic Raab is actively saying, on behalf of the UK government, you can go down and see your parents with a two-metre distance. Will that apply in What is your reaction to that? Uh, and will you be doing that in Scotland? That, that is not the situation in Scotland right now. The situation in Scotland, apart from that one change around exercise, hasn't changed. The advice is stay at home, stay away from people in households other than your own. Now, I haven't seen my parents for weeks and weeks and weeks. I miss them uh, dearly. My husband and I haven't seen my 90-year-old mother-in-law uh, for weeks, who's, who's very vulnerable. These are really difficult things for everybody, but there's a reason for that, and it's for the protection of older people. Right, who so are why are we no longer protecting these people in this country? Why has the UK government suddenly announced I, I, it's fine to go and, and put them at risk? I don't get with it. The, with the greatest respect, I, I can't speak for the UK government. Well, I, you're I the nearest don't... we've got, unfortunately. <laughs> you're the First Minister of Scotland. None of the I... UK government will come on. Dominic Raab is spouting all this stuff on other airwaves. <laughs> I can't I... ask him supplementaries. You're going to have to do, I'm afraid, Nicola Sturgeon. I'm struggling to speak for anybody just now, so if you let me, I can't speak for the UK government. I haven't seen the detail of the document that they're going to publish today. I respect the right to take the decisions they think are right from England. The last thing I want to do, or I'm doing, is seeking to undermine the messages they're giving. Yeah, but the fact you won't do it in Scotland means you don't agree with it. I mean, let's just be completely clear. And the reason it's so serious is you don't agree with it because you think it will actually put people's lives at risk. Can I ask Nicholas... Well, hang on, I just want to get a response to that because... I don't think you can just say, I don't want to criticise the government. The truth is, by saying that you don't want to do the same thing because you want to protect lives, you are clearly inferring that what the UK government is now recommending will put people's lives at risk, aren't you? If, given the state of the evidence in Scotland, the state of the virus in Scotland, if I was to do that now in Scotland, then, yes, I think that potentially would put lives at risk. So the if, UK the government is actively now putting... King, people's and, lives at risk. I mean, that's what you're saying. Do what I think is right for Scotland and, and, and tell people clearly. Well, one of my big worries right now is that people get confused because they hear, perhaps for perfectly legitimate reasons, different governments saying different things. Yeah. That's why I think even if we are on slightly different timescales and timelines, we need to coordinate our messaging. Well, they're now hearing well. the First Minister of Scotland and you're joined <laughs> by Northern Ireland and by Wales in this, saying a completely different thing to what the UK Prime Minister is saying, which is about the most dangerous mixed messaging I can possibly imagine, where the UK itself, in leadership, is completely fractured. You think that what the UK government is now doing will put lives at risk. There'll be people watching this programme who can't hear from the UK government who hear that and go, well, what do I do? Do I go and see my parents? Do I put their lives at risk? If you live in England, you should take your advice from the Prime Minister. Uh, and it's for the Prime Minister to set out clearly why he thinks these decisions are right. But you think My... that decision-making is going to put people's lives at risk? And the Don't virus is no respecter of borders, by the way. So you may have the situation where, literally, just over the internal border between Scotland and England, you've got people doing something which you think could be deadly.